Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. For our remaining segments, I'll be using our Aero-V display engine to help better illustrate the final assembly operations. In our last segment, we installed the accessory plate on the back of our Aero-V engine. The accessory plate uh, includes the primary ignition system. Now when you install the primary ignition system, the spark plug wires will not have boots on them. They'll just be bare wires like this, and this is what uh, clips onto the spark plug. So one of the operations you'll do is to install the spark plug boot. Just a rubber boot. It has a larger hole on one uh, end of the boot and a smaller hole on the other end of the boot. The smaller hole goes on the wire. The larger hole goes on the spark plug. So you just check your alignment of your uh, spark plug in and see where the spark plug plugs in and then just slide the boot on so that the larger hole aligns with that clip that clips onto the spark plug. And that's all there is to it. You do that on all your primary ignition leads and you'll be all set. The other operation we do now uh, after we've installed our accessory plate is to adjust the spacing for our primary ignition magnetrons. The spacing between the primary ignition magnetron and the magnet on the flywheel is approximately 10 thousandths. In your Aero-V kit, you'll be given a piece of 10 thousandths shim stock like this that you'll use to measure that clearance. When you get it in the kit, it'll be flat. It'll just be a flat piece of springy uh, shim stock. It makes it a little easier to do the job if you pre-curve the shim stock. So what I do is just grab the end of it, twist it around in a a coil like this and, and kind of spring it together, give it a little springiness, hold it for a little while and release it and you'll end up with a slightly curved piece of shim stock and that'll make it a little bit easier to do your, your me measurement of your clearance. What we're measuring is the clearance between the magnet on the flywheel and the shoes of the magnetron. So we're going to feed our shim stock in on top of the flywheel magnet. You'll have to rotate your engine and you'll watch as you rotate the magnet through, you can see the shim stock coming through between the magnet itself and the shoes of the magnetron. Once you get it in there so that the magnet is directly below the magnetron, you can stop there. You can loosen these uh, fastening screws here just until they're just snug, and then you can move the magnetron down until it is snug against the uh, magnet shoe. You don't want it so tight that you can't rotate the engine. So leave the shim stock in there, push it down so it's just snug, and then tighten your fasteners back down. Once you do that, you can rotate uh, the engine, remove your shim stock, and then perform the same operation on the bottom. So you measure the top one, 10 thousandths on your shim stock, then bring your shim stock around and measure the bottom one, and your primary ignition's all set. 